So this one can be pretty uh, basic. I like to go through this one fairly quickly. Again, we look at this triangle and we say, all right, if I can find a ratio, then I can apply the law of sines, right? And do I have a ratio? Yes, I have a ratio of its angle over its side length. Cool? So now that I have my ratio, I'll write down that ratio as 3 over the sine of b. Now, what am I going to compare it to? How am I going to create a proportion? Well, you want to create a proportion with the other length or angle that you have. Well, in this case, I have angle A. So I'm going to say, well then, A, well, A is 10, over the sine of A. Okay? You don't always have to write that whole, all those proportions. Yes? We do have B. I just didn't write it in. Okay. So you don't need to write everything like I did on the, la on the last two examples. You can just write what you have. Okay. Um, so that's what I have, and that's what I'm going to apply. So now I can apply cross multiplication. Why can I apply cross multiplication? Because I have a proportion. And that is the only time you can apply cross multiplication. Okay. Because those are not fractions. You're not multiplying fractions. You are solving for a proportion. All right? And cross multiplication is just a little gimmicky way to show the operation. All right? So therefore, what I have, um, can I just solve for sine of A? Is that OK? I'll just solve for sine of A. So therefore, I'll have 3, I'm sorry, sine of A equals 10 times sine of 150 degrees divided by 3. So now I go to my calculator. And to solve for this one, I type in 10 times the sine of 150. And I divide it by 3. Now one thing, since we didn't do 4.7 or 4.8 this year, you guys don't really understand the meaning of trying to take the inverse of 1.6. All right. So unfortunately, I can't really go through it on why. I can give you guys a quick little representation. Um, but you cannot take the inverse of 1.6. 1 1.6 is not within the domain of our inverse sine function. So because when you try to take the inverse of 1.6, what you guys notice is it's air. Okay? So what that means is it is impossible, even though, yes, I wrote this triangle, it looks like this, but it is impossible to actually create a triangle that has a degree of 150 and a side length of 3 and then another side length of 10. Why is that? If you guys remember, if you guys even look at this, your triangle, one thing we taught, teach in geometry, obviously the smaller the angle, the smaller the side length, right? The bigger the angle, the bigger the side length. Does that make sense? Look at this triangle, 150 to 3. If this side length is 10, that angle has to be bigger than 150, right? So therefore, no triangle exists. But there's not a solution. You're trying to find the lengths of each and angle. So you just say no triangle exists. 